Hi, my name is Katie Anthony. I am a fourth year doctoral student at Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa. And today I am going to be talking about the research that I did surrounding motivation behind technology use among aging adults. So when I sought out to begin this research, which was a systematic review, I really sought to understand why technology use is adopted or rejected among older adults. I wanted to understand what was driving them to and away uh, from technology and why some older adults were adopting versus other older adults rejecting this technology. And I also wanted to know what was working to help them um, adopt this technology long term. So were there systems in place? Are there specific pedagogies that are working that are helping for long-term adoption? Are there specific motivators that are working over um, another? So that is really the rationale and the research aims that I sought out to answer with this research. And really the reason why all of this matters is that by 2030, so really in the next decade, we're going to be at a ratio of one to five uh, with the residents over the age of 65. So I'm sure we've all heard about this demographic shift that is about to happen in the next 10 years and that, you know, every day 10,000 baby boomers are making this shift in to the 65 and above category. And it is something that we need to be aware of. So um, that was one of the driving forces. So given that there are going to be two and a half working individuals for every one older adult, and that's really going to put some strain on the dependency ratio in the United States, and this median age is going to shift significantly in the next uh, 40 years, and it's going to become significantly older, Technology can really help fill some of the gaps that are going to exist when these resources start to become strained in terms of physical health and emotional health. And it's something that I think that we've really seen over the last eight to nine months as COVID has really picked up. And we've seen how we really rely on these technologies and we've really needed these technologies to function, unfortunately, as we stay away from one another and socially distance and still maintain contact and social relationships as much as possible. So as pandemics become, unfortunately, potentially more possible and the loneliness epidemic among older adults continues to grow, technology is a key component that already exists that could really help and aid a demographic that could really use it. So what I did for this systematic review is that I reviewed five databases. So PsycInfo, PubMed, Google Scholar, Web of Science Core Collection, and ERIC. And I used a combination of some of the keywords that you can see on the screen. So self-determination theory or motivation. And I really tried to key in to self-determination theory given its holistic picture of motivation and the fact that it really focuses on the psychological needs or the argument that there are three psychological needs of autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And to fulfill these three needs, um, a person is really going to be intrinsically motivated and there's this self-determination continuum from a motivation through extrinsic motivation all the way to intrinsic motivation. And I really wanted to see what literature exists that focused on self-determination theory, but I didn't exclude it if it wasn't included. So I included self-determination. I also included motivation and um, I didn't narrow down by the technology. I tried to keep it to information and communication technology 
I went into this with a mindset of social media or even spe more specifically a uh, specific site like Facebook or Twitter, but the research is so limited as you'll see that I really had to broaden my scope in order to make significant progress. So it came down to over 20,000 um, journals with those five databases. And here's a little more of my inclusion criteria. So just to make it very specific is I defined older adult as 60 years and above. And I did this in 2019. So this did cut off about five years of baby boomers. So baby boomers at that point would have been 55 and above. So there's a little bit of flexibility there. So it was 60 and above. Motivation had to be included, but it didn't have to be self-determination theory. Uh, all technologies were accepted as long as the older adults were directly using or interacting the tech with the technology. It had to be in English. It had to be original research uh, in terms of it couldn't be another systematic review or meta analysis I needed or was looking for and included only original research. But I didn't screen for qualitative over quantitative because I think that adults speaking about their experiences after using technology for an extended period of time can be just as valuable as running an experiment where the older adults are using the technology and then running a quantitative analysis with it. And then I only included research in the last five years. So it would have been 2014 to 2019 when I did this. And this is how it broke down. So through those five databases of over 20,000 journals that those five databases hold, only 627 uh, articles were identified that met that inclusion criteria that I just went through. So there were 98 that I removed because they were duplicates. And then I screened 529 of them you can see the breakdown in terms of um, how they were excluded and why they were excluded and then full text that I then assessed for eligibility in terms of being full text. And I was ultimately left with 30 after narrowing it down for either age criteria no mention of technology at all. It didn't include motivation or it was another lit review or a systematic or meta and it didn't contain original research. So this is how everything broke down and I ended up with 30 articles altogether. So what I really found is that there was a very heavy focus on intrinsic motivation, which wasn't surprising since that is kind of the heart and soul of motivation, especially self-determination theory. Uh, the end result is that a person is solely intrinsically motivated. Um, extrinsic motivation was tied only to the outcomes that were perceived benefits of use. Um, again, not a lot of surprise there. Uh, there wasn't a lot of extrinsic ties in terms of cost. I think that there was one article that might have mentioned cost, and then there was another article where it talked about how an older adult had purchased a car because of the technology associated with the car, but it wasn't anything that he would buy again um, because of cost associated there. And another interesting thing is that the studies focus primarily on women. Only two out of the 30 articles that were analyzed had more male than female participants. This is a more thorough breakdown of the results and a visualization of how the motivation aspect came through. So when it came to intrinsic, since I really set out to understand what was driving them 
to them being the older adults setting set out to understand why older adults were using technology and what their end result was and what was motivating them to engage with it. I broke broke it down to themes. So the primary themes being communication with family and friends and it gave them independence and there was self-efficacy and uh, cognition benefits and education benefits. And those were really common themes throughout the 25 pieces that were represented intrinsically. And what was really interesting there is that, yes, there was the communication with friends and family and there was independence. Uh, and you can really see the three aspects of self-determination theory with the autonomy and the competence, especially the competence. The confidence came through really strongly with the self-efficacy and especially the um, cognition studies and the education. There was a lot of discussion over, I'm going to engage with this only if um, I'm challenged. And you see that with the one, um, a motivation article. So there was no challenge and there was no contact with others. So I used, I split them into two different, even though there was just the one. And I did that because technically they're two different themes under self-determination theory. So there's no challenge being more of a competence element and then no contact with others being a relatedness aspect. So it was really interesting to see how many of these articles in that didn't use self-determination theory. In fact, I believe it was only four of the 30 articles that actually even mentioned self-determination theory, but all of them fell under this continuum with the benefits and tracking progress and communicating with others while also having these benefits of their independence and making decisions and feeling challenged and gaining education. So it was really interesting to place the outcomes in this continuum and truly see from a motivation through extrinsic all the way into intrinsic how the 30 articles played out. So some interesting implications and some further discussion on this is that the prevalent model that was used was the technology acceptance model. And I think that that's why there was such an overwhelming amount of intrinsic motivation focus and why there wasn't more technology frustration or technology rejection, because that was really the model that was pushed and encouraged. And I, it was clearly very successful. Again, there wasn't a lot of focus on extrinsic motivation. And that's interesting because a lot of the articles that were excluded in a lot of the research that you see currently is focused on things like security, which is arguably both extrinsic and intrinsic, and things like cost, which could arguably be both extrinsic and intrinsic, but is mostly extrinsic and an extrinsic driving factor. And that was very, very rarely incorporated into the conversation. The two biggest implications in the systematic review is that there is a very clear and large gap in literature in terms of understanding the motivating factors between adults and why they are or are even more important are not using technology. I think that often we stray away from writing pieces as to why they are not. And then again, how is answered? So how are they engaging or how are they using the technology? But why is not always answered or more importantly, why not? So if we're going to use this technology as a way to fill the gap 
and address re or address a shortage or a stress on resources, we have to understand both the positive and the negative. So where are the shortcomings? Why aren't we discussing those as much as we are discussing the successes of these technologies for the older adults? I mean, it's great if we can talk about the technologies for the stereotypical things like fall prevention and exercise and other smart home features, which are all great and I'm grateful for, and I think that it's all exciting and wonderful research, but we also need to be focused on more non-traditional technologies and answering things like, okay, well, what don't you like about communication technologies like Zoom or Skype or things that can keep you connected with your loved ones who you may not be able to physically see right now when you still need an aspect of human connection because realistically there's going to need there is still that need and that need is going to be greater as resources dwindle over the next several years so some next steps we need more research focused on self-determination theory because of the holistic picture it provides and technology use among older adults. And even if it's not self-determination -determ theory, I will admit I have a self-determination theory bias wholly because I think it is, it provides a whole person picture from a motivation to intrinsic and you really, it just really allows you to find yourself on that continuum. But even if it's not self-determination theory, we need to understand the motivation behind technology use and older adults and because I think it would be beneficial. And like I've been saying, we need to understand why technology is and is not being used because we need to get away from these stereotypical pictures that you see and get into more like these pictures of adult education classes and gaming and communication because that's where we could really benefit and find the good positive use. Obviously, it's not ever going to be a complete fulfillment of physical contact, um, but I think that in understanding this and in filling that gap, we're going to be one step closer to really hitting our mark for aging and technology use. Thank you so much.